Hi again, class. This is our second lecture in Criminal Judicial Process, CJ 379, and today I'm going to cover briefly um, Chapter 4 in your text concerning state courts. We left off talking about how you model the judicial system and mentioned that we were going to focus just on state courts, not federal courts. Now state courts, are, uh, as you will tell from the readings, are a tiered system involving very lower courts that handle municipal matters, traffic matters, uh, minor misdemeanors at times, and then there are, and those are courts of limited jurisdiction. And then there are second tier trial courts, often referred to as circuit courts or superior courts here in Washington that are referred to as superior courts which handle typically limited jurisdiction or rather general jurisdiction cases such as felony matters um, and uh, family matters and probate other civil cases and those are the broader courts that you'll typically encounter uh, where matters involving higher amounts of money for example um, I'll just mention one brief part of my experience with that. Often, if a matter in controversy is more than seven or eight thousand dollars in a civil case, a person's trying to recover debt from a debtor, that will end up in these superior courts or in Wisconsin where I practice it was called circuit court. If the matter is less than that, more a more uh, modern amount of money, uh, typically less than eight thousand dollars, those matters will end up in those lower courts of limited jurisdiction called um, in Washington State, specifically a district court. Also, if you get a DUI or a domestic violence case, you'll end up in a district court rather than the more general jurisdiction um, in, that are these superior courts. And that's why they're called superior courts, because you have a, a, a whole set of other problems and cases, probate, family matters, contract matters, criminal matters, felony matters especially, that those courts handle. So those are really the, the first tier of the more serious courts. And then you have maybe two tiers or one more tier of appellate jurisdiction. In Washington State it's the appellate courts uh, where you get one chance of an appeal and then above that court is this, the Supreme Court which is your second chance of appeal and that's the court of last resort, the Supreme Court. So that's essentially the, the tiered system in Washington State. Focus on that because some of my questions may focus on the court structure. So just to give you a heads up on the next assignment, we're talking about chapter four. We'll get on to the next readings in a few a few more days, but focus specifically on how the court structured and why. I'll give you a little illustration just to make things fun. Um, in Wisconsin, for example, and in many other states, you'll see this in your text, a, a, a very large amount of states, the, the courts of general jurisdiction, which in Washington are called superior courts, are called circuit courts. And uh, just a little piece of historic trivia, they're called circuit courts because back in the early days, and just after the colonial days and uh, before the Civil War, before the country became more industrialized, the courts used to move around to different counties like a circus almost, or like a show or a production. They, they used to move around from, uh, in, not in every state, but at least in, I would say, about a third of the states, and Wisconsin is one of the many of the states in the Midwest, you would have these courts that would move around, and the, and the, the attorneys would have to follow them and, and, and travel to these courts and, and, and practice in different locations, even though their case might have been originated in their hometown. So uh, Lincoln, uh, who we all know of, was when he was a lawyer in, in um, Illinois, that's what he had to do. He would have to travel from county to county following these courts in a route that was routine, and they had a, a certain term in which they would do that. Those were called circuit courts for those reasons, because they had a preset circuit. And nowadays that's an obsolete name, but that's, that's the reason why you have the name circuit court. I personally don't really know why Washington calls their general jurisdiction courts superior courts, but it would be that would be an interesting question that I might ask you in uh, an assignment or uh, um, 
in a discussion session. So take a look at that part of it. Um, I think that's the more, one of the more important parts of the, the chapter, as well as um, the um, discussion about um, how, how many cases are handled by the superior courts, what types of cases. Uh, so the last discussion we had, I, I did mention that criminal courts are a large part of that, but in Washington, it's a little different than Wisconsin, in Washington, having um, a state that has a bigger population, probably a more industrialized sector than Wisconsin, more tech companies, you have many more civil cases. So the caseload in Washington state, there are probably more civil cases than criminal cases, whereas in Wisconsin, it's more criminal cases. But in any event, a large part of a court's docket is either going to be criminal or civil, and many of these cases are either criminal or family law cases. So um, a lot of the employment that you're going to get if you're looking for jobs in the future, you're going to see that um, in uh, your your family law area and, and your, your criminal or your traffic, criminal traffic area. That's where a lot of the cases are, domestic violence. Um, that's where a lot of the court industry is based on in those cases. So, um, And then the last thing I want to focus on in this brief talk is um, the three strikes and your outlaw, and your the three strike the three strikes and your out law, especially the one in California. You'll see there's a little box uh, table in the text in chapter four referring to the three strikes and your outlaw. I just want to mention in closing that that law. I'm touching the computer here to show an, an image of uh, people being walked around and and at San San Quentin State Prison in California. The law in California, which was very controversial because uh, it gave life sentences, life sentences for a third offense if, if one other offense was violent, um, if you got a third offense that was a felony, you were going to get a life sentence, and that was overturned by a referendum just this year in California, this November. So that's kind of interesting. I think I'm going to do a post on that, so look for that coming up. And for now, I'll say goodbye, but that's our our second discussion of where our course is headed. So focus on chapter four, and then very shortly I'll have a little primer on what our next reading, readings are going to be for this week of, the, of January um, 13th. Thanks.